Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, in the last video we discussed creating users and assigning security. Today we are going to look further into how database security actually works. So we will talk about ownership types, business units, hierarchy, security, and position security, and how all this connects to what a user can or cannot access in their environment. So let's start with um, ownership in Dataverse. So as you know, every record in Dataverse belongs to someone, and that ownership decides who can access, edit, or delete, or share um, that record. So there are three main types of ownership in Dataverse, and they are user, team, and organization type of ownership. And we can break them down. So basically, a user, that is the most uh, common type of ownership, it just means that a specific user owns that record. For example, if I create a new account record, I am the owner of that record and my permissions decide who else can access or modify that record. And then you have team owned records. Um, this means a group of users collectively own the record. So think of a, a sales team or a marketing team that needs shared access to records. So you can create a team and that team can own the set of records and they can um, do things with that record. So it's not just one person that has control over that, um, uh, over this record, it's the whole team and every member in that team. And then uh, the other one, you have organization ownership. These records don't belong to any user or team. It belongs to the whole organization. So you will have like common tables like currency or territory or locations like country. Um, you will have them as an organization owned. So you can think of them as a global data points that everyone should be able to um, access. And why is that important? So ownership directly impacts record level security. If you set up your tables, for example, let's say with user or team ownership, Dataverse will ensure rules like owner access, business unit access, or organization access depending on the role. So uh, think of ownership as a, a way to really fine grain your uh, security. So, and I'll show you how that looks. So basically, if I go to my uh, table here, um, if I go here to my uh, um, expense management app, I am on a record for Meta and I am the owner of that record. So let's say I wanted to assign this, as you can see, assign to, to me or to user or team. So if I say to user, I can assign it to anyone, say, um, we have here, I can assign it to Jane or James. But as you can see here, it only allows me to pick between user or team. It doesn't give me organization choice. And the reason it doesn't do that is because you have to determine what kind of ownership, uh, record ownership you want when you first create the table. So if you look into creating a table here, uh, I'm just creating a table. And if you go to advanced properties, as you can see, uh, record ownership, that is a required field. You can either use user or team, or you can choose organization. And you have to be um, careful with this one because you cannot change it later. So you have to determine what kind of um, ownership um, is needed for the table. And this comes to, you know, to data modeling when you first start um, to design your solution. So this comes early on and you need to be careful what kind of record ownership you want. Do you want everyone to have an access to it as a whole organization, or do you want it to be for a specific user or, or a team? Um, and the next thing we're gonna look at is, um, sorry about that, uh, is business units. Business units are basically, they are the backbone of your organization or uh, your structure, organization structure in Dataverse. So they represent departments, regions, or divisions, and every user belongs to one. Um, so basically, here's a structure. Think of, um, let's say you have a head office business unit, and under that head office business unit, you have departments like sales and marketing, and these are subunits. Um, and you can have users that belong to, to marketing, you have users that belong to sales, you have users that belong to inventory and also human resources and so on and each user from each business unit can only access um, the data that is 
within the AI unit or on the child business unit. So if you have the head office, a head office will be able to access data on the sales and marketing. But if you're in sales, you're only able to access um, data in the sales. Uh, so by default, you will only access data in sales. And if you're in marketing, you will only access uh, data in marketing. And if we look into business um, units, uh, the first way to get to your business units is to go to your um, make.powerapps.com. You will go to your admin center in admin, that platform, uh, admin platform. And then you'll go to manage your environments. So you go to manage your environments. And I'll go to this environment that I'm working with. And from here, you can go to see all business units from here. Just click on that. Um, so you can access it from here. As you can see, I've already I've gone ahead and created marketing business unit and then sales business unit. Right tech here is my default head business. That's the main company. That's the parent of both marketing and sales. Um, and to create a, a new business unit, you just go here, you click business unit, you name it, and then make sure you direct the parent business unit. My parent business unit is right tech, but yours might be different. So you always choose the parent business units that you want to sit on top of that uh, business unit that you're creating. So you basically we call them here, Raytech, which is a default main business unit. We call that the parent and anything below that we call them the child business unit. Another way to access this one is basically by going here and then going, so you go to your environment and then you go to setting. And then from setting, you can go to users and permissions and then you just go to business unit. And that's how you access it. But business units alone by themselves do not actually mean anything. They need to have users assigned to them. So my the users that I have created, if I go back to my um, uh, settings here, if I go to users, these are the users that I have created and they all belong to Raytech at the moment. I haven't assigned them to anything else. So for example, if I go here, I am the owner of this record. This record belongs to Raytech. It doesn't belong to um it does not belong to sales or marketing it just belongs to Raytech, to the head company to the parent company so anyone that's within that parent company that has a security role can access it so if i want to assign it to say um let's see i go to james bond i'm able to assign it however what i will do now is i want to assign james bond to a different to a different um, business unit. So I'll click on James Bond here. And as you can see, it just says his um, roles are basic user, so he can read and write and have uh, an access to that data. And his business unit is rated. I will change that business unit to marketing. So I'll put James Bond to marketing. And I'll click OK. Yeah, so that's done. Now, if I go to my account here, I can just refresh it first. I'm the owner of that record. Now, if I try to assign it to James Bond, it will not work. It will give me an error. As you can see, it says the assignee does not hold the required uh, security role. And the reason for that is, if I go back, we have just changed James Bond to a different business unit, but if I click on James Bond here, he doesn't have any security role, so he's unable to access anything. So I'll have to go and manage roles again and assign a basic user. And I'll save that. Um, so that's done. And while I'm at it, I'll just assign John Smith to I'll assign him to the sales business unit just so you will see how all this comes along as we go through the video that's done I haven't assigned any roles actually I will also manage roles and give him a basic user security role so now if I go back here and I want to assign it to James Bond I should be able to assign it because James Bond 
has a security role to be able to read and and access or read and write and access um, the record data.